thanks Fiverr for sponsoring today's video. It's time to get real. Basic. I've been having a lot of fun lately writing silly games that can run on really old Macs. So today, I thought I'd show you how I have Real Basic set up on a modern computer, and how I transfer files easily between this and uh, <laughs> a somewhat less modern Macintosh. It's easier than you think, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy learning new skills, 30 years too late, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So I'm not going to make you hunt around the video for the answer to what in the heck is going on here. Basilisk 2, Blue Scuzzy. But the real magic is how I have these two things configured and just how well they can work together. Let's start with Basilisk 2, which has turned this ThinkPad X1 Carbon into a very convincing and functional 90s power book. Basilisk 2 is an open source Macintosh 68K emulator, and it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And you can download this completely free. It's very easy to set up and configure. Now, I've done a couple special things in my configuration here. We can see the .basilisk2 preps, which is in your home folder on Mac OS or Linux. Specifically, I've created a two gigabyte HDA file on Linux here using the dd command, although you can also download some images from the Macintosh garden. I've also set up some stuff like the screen resolution at 960 by 540 for a nice widescreen experience. And altogether, when I run Basilisk 2, we get a full screen Mac OS experience. And it really looks, feels, and acts like it's a classic Mac OS device, just extremely fast and responsive. Now, what's really cool is that you can take the HDA hard drive image right from Basilisk, copy it to an SD card, and stick it right into a blue SCSI. And this will boot that same exact image from the emulator on real hardware. That's why I named that image file starting with HD1. That means hard drive one, so the blue SCSI puts it in SCSI ID1. And then this quadra sees it as a real hard disk. Now that you've seen my workflow here, let's build something silly in Real Basic because it is just so fun to use. And using software like Real Basic, QBasic, and Visual Basic is how I really fell in love with computers as a kid. Now, I was trying to think of what would make a good game that would run on pretty much any Macintosh, and I really love those idle clicker games like Cookie Clicker, and you may have seen me toying around with a concept like this, Squirrel Simulator, but that was really just a proof of concept, and I was using graphics I found on Google Images, and I couldn't really find the ownership info. So, we can make use of today's sponsor, Fiverr, and look for someone who can do actual real pixel graphics both in color and one bit black and white. There are a ton of really great pixel artists that I found on Fiverr, and it's where I found Diego Rego, who makes all sorts of great art and animation. Looking at his portfolio really sold me because in addition to beautiful pixel art color scenes that look right out of a Super Nintendo game, he had some lovely grayscale Game Boy looking pixel animations. That's in addition to his quite high rating. So I messaged Diego about what I was looking for, probably being a bit vague and weird, asking for compact Macintosh compatible artwork, but Diego was on board immediately. I asked him for two frame animations of a squirrel eating an acorn, as well as a scene of a giant mutant squirrel chasing people through a city. I could never have created this art myself, and AI would have made something weird and soulless. So I'm so glad I found Diego out of the huge selection of freelancers on Fiverr. Fiverr even offers the option of video consultations with freelancers now, which is incredibly cool. Visit fiverr.co slash action retro to get started and use my promo code action retro for 10% off your first order. It is so easy to get started with Real Basic once you download it from the Macintosh Garden. You can simply Find the correct version here, Real Basic 2.1.hqx, and Basilisk 2 makes your file system on your modern computer available as this Unix drive here. And there's a file I downloaded right from the Macintosh Garden, and I've installed Real Basic 
2.1.2, which is the perfect version because it works on, well, System 7 and up, on a 68030 and up, and on PowerPC, which means we can have programs that run on as far back as an SE30 compact black and white Mac, or I think a Mac Plus that I've upgraded to a 68030 CPU. Oh yeah. <laughs> It uh, looks like we just have the one frame. I think I'll have to separate the GIF into two frames before importing here. Uh, yeah, Photoshop 4 doesn't like this transparent animated GIF. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so good. Look at that. All right, I've got these two animated GIFs separated out into four individual pictures. And just watch how easy it is to import these into real basic. I can save one of these and choose picked file. And those picked files can just, well, drag and drop them right into real basic. Look at that. And now if I put an image in here, just drag it on over and then select backdrop I can choose from these images I just drug in. So right from Fiverr into Real Basic in Mac OS 7. Amazing. And jump cut to I've made some progress. I have imported all the images into the squirrel simulator code and I've written some additional code. And uh, yeah, well, let's take a look at what I have so far. If we first run Squirrel Simulator, we have an option for black and white and color. If we choose black and white, well, everything is in one bit black and white, suitable for a compact Mac. And if we choose color, obviously everything is nice and colorized. I have this little cheat button here for testing purposes, which will open up all of the options, including the final option mutate, so we can see the you hunger for flesh scene. Uh, this is eventually going to be a mini game where the squirrel will go back and forth and you have to catch people. But for now, just click feed and we are back at the main screen. And well, the code is quite simple. If we click on forage, we can see there is an update game function in here, which lives inside of this module. So we have methods in here like update game which simply does the whole game tick in response to various actions. So we have this timer control here, which does update game and the timer control can get sped up with some of these other options here, which is part of the idle clicker-ness of the game. So I think what I wanna do is make all of this just kind of open source and put it up on GitHub and uh, I'll share it in Patreon, you know, there's a free tier on Patreon where I will, I guess, share the compiled version of this, or maybe I'll put the compiled version on GitHub as well. But why don't we test this out on some real hardware? So I'm going to build the application to make the Squirrel Sim application. And look, we can compile this for Windows in here too, which is pretty epic. Real Basic is pretty darn sweet. All right, we have an application. All right, I've copied that image to the root directory of this XFAT formatted SD card. And check that out. Just like that, we are booted on real frickin' hardware. We can go into Squirrel Sim here, and look, there's our application we compiled on the modern computer. Oh, there it is, our Squirrel Simulator. And we can already see some issues. There's some flickering switching this big image back and forth between the two frames for animation. And if we go into color here, look at that. Here's our game. We're in 256 colors, I think. Let's see. Millions of colors looks a little bit nicer. So maybe I can edit these colors a bit in Photoshop. That's why it's so freaking cool to test on real hardware, but <laughs> uh, look at that, amazing. But why don't we test this out on something even slower? 
This is a Macintosh Plus, and ordinarily the 68,000 CPU would be too weak to run our real basic software, but I met up with a very generous viewer at VCF Midwest who let me borrow his 68030 upgraded Mac Plus motherboard. So all we need to do is add a diode to the board to let us easily boot up off of this blue SCSI. And you thought you'd get out of here with no soldering. What could he possibly have to solder in a video about real basic? Well, we need to add a diode right here to power that blue SCSI. All right, here we are booted into the Mac Plus. We'll use Tattletech to just confirm the 68030 is working. Yeah, there we go, CPU 68030. <laughs> Let's try Squirrel Sim. Oh no, unimplemented trap. All right, I'm running Squirrel Sim with no finder, which uh, not only kills the finder, but shows me how much memory this is taking up. It's only taking up 1.6 megs, so I don't know why it's not working here. Unimplemented trap. All right, well, I really wanted to see this running on a compact Mac, so I've busted out my uh, slightly upgraded Macintosh SE30. And here we go, Squirrel Simulator. Now this is running at 50 megahertz, which is uh, quite a step up from the 16 this is normally running. But I'm curious how the screen size works. Oh yeah, still a little flashy on that graphic. I wonder if there's a better way to do that. But yeah, let me open up all the options here. Ooh, a little bit of lag. Mutate. <laughs> Uh, it looks so good. <laughs> that is everything I wanted and more. Look at that. You hunger for flesh. Feed. Oh, yeah. See, isn't real basic fun? Well, that'll do it for today's video. Thank you again so much to Fiverr for sponsoring. Go to fiverr.co slash action retro and use my promo code action retro for 10% off your first order. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more weird crap like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Alex the Rat, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Darren Johnstone, Dave's Garage, Drew Hamlin, Eduardo Fonseca, Free Hours 9, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rajansky, Graham, Greg from Rutk Mods, Harris Brody, JS, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Pipas, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowell, Nick Daniels, oh, it's just Jose, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Steve Salivan, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.